afternoon. You're watching the English newscast here on Future Television. I'm Linda Tamim, and these are today's top stories. Defense Minister Samir Mu'bil says he will issue a decree postponing the retirement of Higher Defense Council Major General Mohammad Khair. Russia says it will support a 48-hour ceasefire in Syria's Aleppo, a move the UN says will allow aid to reach besieged areas soon. And the United States acknowledges it waited for Iran to release American prisoners before delivering $400 million in cash it owed the country. Defense Minister Samir Mu'bil has fired back at the Free Patriotic Movement, which denounced his extensions of security officials' terms as a charade. After meeting with Qatar Party Chief Sami Jmail, Mu'bil said he will issue a decree that postpones the retirement of Higher Defense Council Major General Mohamed Khair. His remarks came as a direct response to FBM Chief Gibran Basile, who warned that new extensions may trigger renewed street protests and a boycott of cabinet. Basil said that he and Education Minister Elias Boussab agreed during Thursday's cabinet session to name the candidates to replace Khair, but refused to appoint them. Mu'bil proposed during the session three candidates to succeed Khair, but none received the required two-thirds majority vote. Residents of southern Lebanon have entered the Israeli-occupied Sheba farms to raise their country's flag in protest of the construction of a road in the area for use by Israel's military. UN peacekeepers stationed along the border and the Lebanese and Israeli militaries went on high, high alert as the demonstrators crossed into the occupied territory. Israel has been constructing an almost two kilometer long road between the Blue Line, the internationally recognized border between the two countries and Israel's so-called technical fence erected south of the divide. Sheba MP Qasim Hashim slammed the government's inaction, saying the territories in Sheba Farms and Kfar Shuba belong to Lebanon and they will be liberated. He also accused Israel of seeking to control more Lebanese land by constructing the route. Foreign Minister Gibran Basile asked Lebanon's mission to the United Nations to file a complaint to the Security Council about Israel's incursions in the southern towns. The waste contractor for Greater Beirut refuted claims by Kitaib Chief Sami Jmail regarding the work of Suklin and Sukumi in an East Lebanon landfill. The Kitaib Chief has accused Suklin a day earlier of seeking to bury 96% of trash in Bush Hamoud without recycling over a four-year period. He also accused the company of bribing politicians to cover up the environmental crime it committed. A statement by Suklin and Sukomi said Jmail's news conference included false information that should be rectified to maintain his credibility and the public's right to know facts away from political slogans. Parliament Speaker Nabih Biri has called for a joint meeting between the Administration and Justice, the National Defense and the Interior Committees to study a suggestion. Uh, to implement administrative decentralization in the country. Biddy said the meeting will be held on Tuesday morning, and if the needed quorum was not achieved, the committees will congregate with a third of the members. The Parliament Speaker had suggested during three consecutive dialogue sessions earlier this month to create a Senate and implement administrative decentralization as called for by the Ta'if Accord. A new dialogue meeting will be held on September 5th to continue discussions. Russia says it will support a 48-hour ceasefire in Syria's Aleppo, a move the United Nations envoy said would allow aid to reach besieged areas soon as long as all sides respect the truce. As viral images of Amran, a day's child pulled from rubble in the heavily bombarded rebel-held east of the city, captured the plight of its civilians and drew the attention of the world. Moscow said it was ready to start the first humanitarian pause next week. Western diplomats gave a cautious welcome to the announcement, but stressed that the UN must be in charge of a sustained aid operation. UN envoy Stefan Demistura has long called for a 48-hour halt in fighting each week to allow aid delivery and medical evacuations from both rebel-held eastern and gover government-controlled western Aleppo. And coming up next, Germany will ban women from wearing the face veil in schools 
and universities and while driving. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The United States has acknowledged that it waited for Iran to release American prisoners before delivering $400 million in cash that it owed the country, but again insisted the payment was not a ransom. In January, five American prisoners were released as Washington granted clemency to seven Iranians and withdrew arrest warrants for 14 others. Immediately after that, the U.S. airlifted $400 million worth of Swiss francs and euros to Iran. We were able to com conclude multiple strands of diplomacy within a 24-hour period, including implementation of the nuclear deal, the prisoner talks, and the settlement of an outstanding Hague Tribunal claim, which saved American taxpayers potentially billions of dollars. As we said at the time, we deliberately leveraged that moment to finalize these outstanding issues nearly simultaneously. It's already publicly known uh, that we return to Iran its $400 million in that same time period as part of the Hague Settlement Agreement. With concerns that Iran may renege on the prisoner release uh, given unnecessary delays regarding persons in Iran who could not be located, as well as, to be quite honest, mutual mistrust between Iran and the United States, we of course sought to retain maximum leverage until after American citizens were released. And that was our top priority. Moving on to Germany, Chancellor Angela Merkel's conservatives have agreed that Muslim women, Muslim women should be banned from wearing the face veil in schools and universities and while driving. The move follows an influx last year of more than a million mainly Muslim refugees from Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan and rising public concern after two Islamist attacks and a shooting rampage by a mentally unstable teenager. Interior Minister Thomas de Maizere called for the partial face veil ban as regional interior ministers belonging to Merkel's Christian Democrats and her Christian Social Union allies presented a declaration on tougher security measures, including more police and greater surveillance in public areas. Among the more controversial proposals is the call for the partial ban on the burqa and niqab garments, uh, saying, the sh saying they show a lack of integration suggest women are inferior and could pose security risks. The United Nations has acknowledged that it played a role in the 2010 Haiti cholera outbreak that has killed nearly 10,000 and infected more than 770,000. Farhan Haq, the deputy spokesman for UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, promised a significant new set of UN actions to respond to the epidemic following a confidential report sent to the UN chief that was critical of the world's body's actions. A draft of the report prepared by New York University law professor Philip Alston, who serves as a special rapporteur advising the UN on human rights issues, said the crisis would not have broken out but for the actions of the United Nations. Two Palestinian graphic designers saw one of the tote bag designs go viral after it was photographed on a train in Germany's capital Berlin. In simple bold Arabic script, the text on the bag translates to this text has no meaning except to scare people who don't understand it. The picture of the bag has been widely shared and praised on social media and the two designers, Sana Jamaliye and Haitham Haddad, have been flooded with praise and inquiries about their product. The pair founded Rock Paper Scissors Design Studio in Haifa, Israel in May of 2016. Friends since their college days, they create t-shirts, bags and mugs that deal with social and gender issues in a humorous way. We've heard their playlists, watched them dance together and now we can see U.S. President Barack Obama and his wife Michelle on their first date in a film that follows the future president wooing his future wife over the course of a day. Southside with You dramatizes the Obama's first date in the summer of 1989 and sees Michelle Robinson, a 25-year-old lawyer from Chicago, going out with Barack Obama, a summer associate at her law firm. Here's the trailer. There's heat, there's heat. Hey, Chicago, what are you doing to keep cool? <laughs> Oh, 
Michelle. Thought it wasn't a date? It isn't. Going to an awful lot of trouble for just another smooth talking brother. He's a summer associate I told y'all about, the one from Harvard Law. He invited me to a community event. So what's this boy's name? Barack Obama. Barack Obama? Hi. Hello. You're late. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. I expected it. You were late for your first day of work. You've noticed that too. I'm your advisor. I'm supposed to notice. <laughs> well, Michelle, all set. Mm hmm. Shouldn't we be getting to the meeting? Oh, we have some time. I thought we'd swing by the art center, see some paintings, maybe grab a bite to eat. This is not a date. How's it gonna look if I start dating the first cute black guy who walks through the firm's doors? It would be tacky. You think I'm cute? I didn't say that. You can tell by a smile. So why did you come to Chicago? To try and make a difference. Thought I would too. Maybe I'd help women empower them. You and I share a lot of the same interests. That's sweet of you, but I'm an ice cream kind of girl. Who doesn't like pie? This is Barack's woman, Michelle. Finally a sister. Mm -hmm. We're not together. Pretty good setting to bring a girl surrounded by people who adore you. We gotta stop thinking no is the end of the line. You flip those letters around, you get an entirely different word. On. As in carry on. And an inspirational speech that had everybody in awe. Say it with me now. They say no, we say. It's been a while since I've had that kind of connection to real life struggle. I just want to do more. Yeah, so do I. I wonder if I can write books or hold a position of influence in civil rights. Politics? Maybe. You want some? Sure. Smooth, don't you? And real cute. I mean, they did look good on Dumbo. <laughs> this marks the Over Bolton for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Defense Minister Samuel Mobil says he will issue a decree postponing the retirement of Higher Defense Council Major General Mohamed Khair. Russia says it will support a 48-hour ceasefire in Syria's Aleppo, a move the UN says will allow aid to reach besieged areas soon. And the United States acknowledges it waited for Iran to release American prisoners before delivering $400 million in cash it owed the country. Those are your top stories for this Friday. I'm Linda Tamim, wishing you all a very nice weekend.